Myofascial release. What is it? Why do you want to do it? And how can you do it yourself? Let's get it. What's up everybody? Coach Zach here with Team Critical Bench. And in this video, we're talking about myofascial release. It's a hot term right now that everyone has heard, but what exactly is myofascial release? Let's break it down. Myo means muscle. We're not going to get too much into the muscle aspect of it. I want to focus more on the fascia part because the more that we understand about the human body, the more that we learn how important the fascial system is. So what is fascia? Fascia is connective tissue that connects literally your entire body from head to toe. It connects your muscles to muscles, to skin, to bones. It connects your organs. It connects everything to everything. Without fascia, your body will have no form whatsoever. Fascia supports, protects, and provides the infrastructure for so many different parts of your body. Now the way that the fascial system works is it works together, creating fascial lines. Now these lines connect muscles and it allows them to work in a synchronized way. For instance, your left lat is connected to your right glute through the fascial lines. So when the left lat is engaged, the right glute will engage as well to allow the body to stay stabilized. Now the fascia isn't simply connective tissue that connects the body. It's much more than that. It actually has neurons in it, making it part of your nervous system. And our way of looking at the body through our Western perspective is actually lining up with what ancient systems were talking about, such as traditional Chinese medicine. If you've ever heard of acupuncture or the meridian systems in traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda, well, these meridians actually line up very similarly to the fascial systems. They had this all mapped out thousands of years ago. And what they actually do in acupuncture is they take the needles, they place it into the fascia, and then they do a little twist. And what that twist is gonna do is it's gonna tighten that fascia, and you can also think of fascia as a hose. If you have a kink in one area, everything else will be affected, it will pull. And so what acupuncture does is they put the needle in, they twist it, pulling the fascia, and then when they remove it, it brings more nutrients, it brings hydration, it brings blood into the fascial system. We don't have a term for it in Western medicine, but the traditional Chinese medicine way of looking at it is that the qi, life force energy, flows through the fascial systems or the meridians. And the way that we look at it, the way that we can quantify it in our Western medicine way of looking at it is piezoelectricity. Now we're just learning more and more about this. This is uh, brand new stuff in the scientific realm. And as I learn more and more about it, I will be able to share with you more of that. But just know that the fascial system and the way that we look at it really lines up with the meridian system and the way that ancient medical systems have looked at it. Another way that you can look at the fascia is think of Plato, right? When Plato is hydrated, it's very malleable. Right? You can move it around, it's kind of gooey in a sense. And the moment that the Plato dries out, it doesn't move anymore. It's stuck, it's rigid. Same thing with the fascia. The fascia needs proper hydration. We want it to stay into that gooey, gel like structure. We don't want it to harden, to calcify, which happens in a lot of people especially because scar tissue tends to form into the fascia, calcifying it, creating the rigid little spots in the fascia, which will affect the entire system. So the goal of myofascial release is to increase hydration, to increase the malleability and the gel-like quality of the fascia. Okay, so now you have an understanding of what the fascial system is and its importance, but how can you do this yourself? Nothing will compare to getting trained hands into these areas to allow them to release, but we're gonna go over how you can do some of this yourself. First of all, you wanna have deep 
pressure. Right? You think of a deep tissue massage, but even more than that, because we really want to get into the fascial system. Fascia doesn't really want to move, especially if you have adhesions, especially if you have scar tissue. It's really going to take some deep pressure. This is where I want to make the point that self-myofascial release is highly intuitive. You have a pain threshold and it's important to find that sweet spot, right? You don't want to go too light because you're not going to be doing much at all. But if you go too much, then your body is going to start to guard. Your nervous system is going to start to activate the sympathetic and you're not going to be able to fully relax and release and melt into the myofascial release. So you want to find that sweet spot, right? It should be on a scale of one to 10, anywhere from six, seven, eight or nine might be too much. And then four or five might be too little. So you just want to gauge it, right? Right around that sweet spot, six, seven, someplace where you can hold, but it's, it's a little uncomfortable. We want to get that therapeutic pain that's going to create some change in the body. Now certain areas might be a lot more intense than others. So decrease the intensity wherever you need. But if you decrease the intensity, if you don't go as hard, then you want to increase the duration, how long you're doing it. Because the fascial system takes some time to respond to pressure and change, you want to do this for quite some time, anywhere from two to five minutes. Right? You really want to find the spot, find that tender spot, and then imagine you are melting into it two to five minutes, it'll get less and less and less. You want to hold it, you want to breathe, you want to relax over whatever you're using to get into that release. Because we're doing these techniques ourselves, you're going to want to use some tools. Now the first tool you're going to use, you can use your hands. Now the more that you practice feeling with your hands, the more that you'll get the palpation skills, the ability to feel with your hands. But if you're a beginner, you can use your hands to self-massage any areas, but it'll get better and better. Your sense of touch, the more you use it. Other than your hands, one of my favorite tools that you can use is you can use some lacrosse balls. Now lacrosse balls have different, uh, different hardness, different uh, squishiness. Right? Some are harder, some are softer. Obviously the harder ones will be intense. So maybe you find some softer ones to start. You can also use a tennis ball, maybe a softball, but, but I find that the shape of a ball can really get into the fascia. And you can also do some techniques where you find it and you twist it, which again will twist that fascia, allowing it to create more change. Other than balls, a very common tool that you can use is a foam roller. Now, this is your basic foam roller, right? It's very smooth and flat. I would suggest against using a basic foam roller like this. To get it really into the fascia, we want to have something with a, a little bit more texture. Right? I really don't think that a basic foam roller like this is going to be able to, to create the change that we're looking for. So instead, you can use a foam roller with some texture. Right? This has a little bit of uh, some raised areas. This will allow it to get a little bit more pressure and get into the fascia a little bit more. And my personal favorite foam roller is a foam roller like this, which has grooves in it, which will really allow you to, to get into some different areas that we'll be getting into. Another tool that you can use is a hard medicine ball. Right, this is a hard one. Uh, this might be a little intense to start, especially with some areas. That's why we got the textured foam rollers. But if you have access to a hard medicine ball, then this will really be great to get some release into the tissues of your body. So now that you've seen the tools that we'll be using, let's get into how you can use those tools to do self myofascial release on different parts of your body. I have several videos coming out explaining how you can use self myofascial release to unlock different areas of your body. I mean, we're talking about your thighs, your shoulder, your hips, your chest, your neck, right? These techniques and doing the self myofascial release will have so many positive effects on your body. It will improve your posture, decrease pain, increase your range of motion. So many benefits from doing this type of work on your own. So if you want to watch these videos and learn how to do this, first you're going to go ahead and have to 
massage that subscribe button down below. These videos will be coming out shortly. Go ahead and like the video, drop a comment with any questions you may have. I'm Coach Zach with Team Critical Bench, and I'll see you next time.